Hey guys, it's Michelle here from My Cup of America, and we are here today with another episode, and we are going to talk with Jared from Refiners Forge from Lexington, Virginia. Jared, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to chat with us and share with everybody what you do. Well, uh, it's my pleasure, Michelle, and uh, thank you so much for having me and taking the time to interview me. Yeah, absolutely. So we were just kind of discussing a little bit um, before we had to start recording here, and you were saying that um, you actually have a background in law enforcement. So how did you go from law enforcement to doing this? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was uh, right out of college. I, uh, actually, during college, I started in law enforcement, and right after college, I got a full-time job in law enforcement, and um uh, so total total time, I have about 13 years uh, as a police officer. Most of that as a road road uh, police officer, patrol uh, deputy, and uh, yeah, frankly, I just I just kind of got burnt out. Um, uh, part of that was my own my own fault. <laughs> I just let negativity of the job get to me, and uh, yeah, and uh, so but. Uh, so I, I was already in the National Guard. I was a Cavalry Scout officer. And uh, they, uh, I'm in the West Virginia National Guard, even though I live in Virginia. And so I did that while I was a, a police officer. And um, I, uh, I was looking for a way to get out of law enforcement and they were needing pilots, helicopter pilots. So oh, wow. I uh, put in my, yeah, I put in my packet for, uh, to apply to be a pilot and went through the process and got accepted. And so I went to lovely Fort Rucker, Alabama uh for about a year and a half took my family down there and learned to wiggle the sticks on a helicopter and uh so i currently do that as well that's my wow. part-time job is uh i'm a company commander of a uh, uh search and security uh helicopter company and uh so fly luh 72 lakota is part-time and command the company and then the blacksmithing my full-time job but while i was while i was down there there at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Uh, uh, I, I'm very hands-on, need something physical to do with my hands. I've been into woodworking a lot, but I had to leave all my woodworking equipment behind at home, couldn't take that with me. So once I got down there, I'd always been fascinating with blacksmithing. You know, I, you know, I'd uh, go to the go to the state fair. I grew up in Alaska and I, you know, I go to the state fair and sometimes there's a blacksmith there and I just want to stay in there and watch the blacksmith all day. So yeah. Uh, uh, so, but, uh, it was, it, all, it was always kind of intimidating. All metal work was kind of intimidating to me. Uh, I just, you know, I didn't have, and it seemed, you know, at that time without YouTube and all that stuff, the internet, uh, woodworking just seemed like it was a lot more accessible to learn. So I, and then, but with the internet and YouTube, uh, you know, it became a lot more accessible to learn and just kind of pick it up on your own. So, um, that's what I did. I, I built a small, small forge and uh, carport, of uh, uh, my on-post housing, which got me in a little bit of trouble, but <laughs> so, <laughs> they didn't see the humor in that. Huh? Uh, I, yeah, so, so I moved into the backyard, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, we uh, so I just started just started doing it. Uh, you know, people ask me how I learned. I joke, and I tell them I went to the University of YouTube, and uh, <laughs> and so. Yeah, Isn't it amazing what you can learn on YouTube? I mean, you can learn literally yeah, anything. Yeah, I might not suggest trying to learn brain surgery, but anything <laughs> short of that, you might be able to learn. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I always, uh, you mentioned that I, I used to have to get some um, epidurals in my back. And when I went in, the doctor would say, okay, we're ready now. I just had to watch YouTube to see how to do this. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. You can, my husband, you know, he has fixed a couple things on the car by going onto YouTube and, and figuring it out. So yeah, it's a wealth of information. Yeah. Yeah. I did. So I, you know, quote self-taught through that, but I mean, really tell, taught by others that are on YouTube, give instructional videos and stuff like that since, right. so since I've gotten into it, I have my own YouTube channel, Refiners Forge, you know, and I, you know, trying to give back a little bit to that. And uh, so, and then, um, so I've been do, I've been uh, blacksmithing for about I think maybe six years altogether, wow. uh, and uh, as, as a job, you know, as kind of my quote full time job, maybe about yeah. four years. So you know, and so many things like this are a lost trade. I mean, it's not some something that people think. Oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be you know a forger or you know some 
some of these other things that, that I'm interviewing people with, I interviewed a guy who's a, a master wood carver, you know, and that's not something that a five-year-old says, when I grow up, I'm going to be this, you know, but it, it's a trade that is, has been lost over the years. And it's so nice to see a lot of this coming back and being used. So what, what kind of products do you make? I've, really, I've been really blessed to um, do a wide range of stuff. Um, you know, I haven't just specialized in one thing or have one or two products that I just push. Um, you know, I, that that kind of production stuff is uh, would kind of bore me, you know. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I've, uh, you know, I started out making, making the small, simple stuff like hooks and bottle openers and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, um, and then, uh, you know, I've made hammers and axes and tomahawks and knives and wow. um, uh, fireplace tool sets, uh, timber framing tools, uh, wine cellar doors. No uh, kidding. Uh, cup, you know, decorative, decorative uh, cupcake stand for a wedding, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, copper and steel roses, um, just uh, skillets. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. And. And one of the one of the ways I kind of grew as a blacksmith and uh, developed my skill uh, was, <clears throat> you know, somebody get a word that you know there's a blacksmith in town now, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and uh, you know, they contact me and say, hey, can you do this project? You know, and uh, you know, especially when I was uh, uh, more green in it than I am now, uh, I was I would you know they'd say, Hey, I got this special custom project. And, uh, what do you think about it? I was like, Oh yeah, sure. I can do that. And then I'd be jumping on YouTube trying to figure out how to do it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like me. I have a tendency to say, sure, I can do that. <laughs> and it's like, okay, now how do right. I do it? <laughs> but that's so right. cool. So what, where do you source your materials and stuff and what, what materials go into? Is there like a certain type of metal you prefer to work with or? Well, so most of it's, uh, most of what I do is steel. I've already mentioned I do the copper roses and stuff like that. So I do work some with copper as well, but, and so there's, there's many different kinds of steel. Uh, so uh, majority, like if, you know, you're doing fireplace tool sets or hooks or something like that, that's all mild steel you use, you know, and I buy all that from a local fabrication shop. He gets a wholesale and I d develops a really good relationship with him and he gives me a pretty good deal on it. And, and so, um, uh, and then like, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing edge tools, like a chisel or a knife or ax, or, you know, there's, there's different ways to do those, but, uh, for the cutting edge, you need a high carbon steel. So, so you, uh, for either you make, either you make the whole tool out of a high carbon steel, or you do the traditional way where the body of it is made out of mild steel. And then you forge weld on a high, piece of high carbon steel for the, for the cutting edge. And I, most of what I do when it comes to edge tools or axes or, you know, uh, draw knives or chisels, that's, that's how I do it. That's how I prefer to do it. Have you ever, um, you probably have watched um, the, but there's a television show my husband watched, Forged, Forged Fire or something like that, where they're always making the knives yeah. and stuff. Yeah, Forged Fire. Everybody asks me, when are you going to go on Forged and Fire? I'm like, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I mean it's funny i kind of got into it uh at first it was like oh it'd be so cool to make my own knives and then that's like my least favorite thing to make now so. <laughs> so what are some of your favorite items did you bring any to show us today uh i wish i had more stuff here but uh i don't, I don't keep a lot of stuff in stock so. <laughs> but, right uh yeah so i mean I, i've talked about the axes some so um now these are these are my own ones that I've kept, and so they're dirty because they get used and stuff. So, but uh, so yeah, this is what's called I call it or what's called a carpenter's axe, and so it's a it's a it's an axe that would be used for doing timber frame or log homes and stuff like that, or chopping joints and stuff like that. Wow, it's got a straight, straighter straighter edge on it than the bigger sweep of most axes. This is got this is called the bearded part. So you can choke up on it real, real high and do real controlled stuff with it. So, and then uh, that's super cool. And then this one, uh, this is like a broad axe, uh, Viking style axe or whatever. So, this is what this is like the full first full size axe I made. So, the uh, wood I, handles yourself. Yeah, so I used. Yeah, I, I used uh, I used to carve the wood handles myself, but it just took too much time away from the forging and stuff. So 
I have a friend uh, that does a really good job. He hand carves them for me. And so nice. I, pay, I pay him to do those. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, um, that's awesome. So do you work yeah, primarily uh, by yeah. yourself? I, I do. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm also very blessed in the fact that I have, uh, I have five sons. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I just want to say my wife is absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, what are their ages? Are they young? Or? Uh, uh, 13, 11, 9, 7, and Wow. You've got your hands full. <laughs> yeah. More so my wife, but yeah, she, uh, she homeschools them all. She's amazing. She does. So. Wow. And yeah. God that. bless that woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you passing on the skills to them? Are they interested in this? They yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, they're, they've all been a little interested in it, you know, and they come up and, you know, forge a hook or, you know, do some other small stuff. Um, uh, you know, this, the, you know, this last, uh, Christmas time leading up was just, uh, was one of my busiest times I had, and, you know, and so I uh, got, uh, especially my couple, my two oldest sons involved doing, um, I have a CNC plasma table that I use to cut out, um, the blanks for my skillets out of sheet steel. And so my nice. oldest, I was teaching him how to do that. He was cutting those blanks out for me. My second oldest, he was making rivets for me to, uh to uh i use in the hinge piece of the skillets and then um couple, then my um third and fourth son uh they uh those copper roses uh I'm teaching them to, the, to texture the, le the the petals of the roses and stuff so and then, wow and i pay i pay them a little bit for that you know i also have a I have a mobile blacksmith trailer i take the fairs and stuff and for several years you know my two oldest sons i've been Take them with me and uh, teach them how to, you know, talk to customers and bring customers up and sell items. And, you know, they give a little forging demonstration sometimes. And sometimes we'll do team forging together, you know. And that I, is I, I, so pay, cool. I pay, you know, I pay them for going with me and helping me out and stuff. So, you know, it teaches them to earn money and yeah. they want to buy that $5 hot dog, you know, at the fair. I was like, well, mm -hmm. You've worked, uh, you know, if it's, if it's worth, you know, an hour yeah. and a half of your life, go buy that hot dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and it's so it's so important to teach that at a young age, you know, the, yeah. the, the values and stuff that a lot of times you just you just don't get in school, you know, and, and that's coming from family. So that's that's really that's really awesome. Did you happen to bring any of your roses? I saw those on the website. Did you have, did you have any of those to show? Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I've sent them all out. All the I'll have you. Them, so. <laughs> well, people just have to go to your website to check it out. But that's really intricate detail on there. Thank that you. That is super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It takes some time. <laughs> so you mentioned, Jared, that you go to different um, like fairs and craft shows and stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, this last year has put a damper on some of that. Yeah. So I think I'm two last fall so but uh I, again i blessed um you know a lot unfortunately a lot of businesses especially small business was small businesses with storefronts and stuff like that really suffered this last year yeah um but the, for me uh you know a lot of my business is online based and uh my business well, this is one of my busiest busiest years i've ever had so lord's blessed me i've grown tremendously and so that's yeah, fantastic. But, yeah, a lot of people, you know, that I've talked to, you know, yeah, we, we went through the pandemic and, you know, we're still feeling the effects from it, but a lot of people had some of their best years, especially doing things like this, you know, because people are, are more looking for that, you know, they want to support the small businesses and, you know, they're, they're doing projects and stuff at home that they've never had time to do and, you know, thinking outside the box a lot. So, you know, in many ways it, it has been, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the blessing is also the curse, you know, and this one, the curse could also be the blessing, you know, so it's kind of funny how, how that happens. So what are, what are some of the struggles you find being an entrepreneur and, and basically working, you know, out of your home? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's a blessing to work out of my home cause I'm, I'm at home, you know, and you know, when, you know, so I have to, you know, with the guard, sometimes I have to leave for a week at a time or, or more. And so, 
it's a, it's a good trade-off for my wife that when I am home, I am home. You know? right. <laughs> so yeah. she needs to do, right? so, <laughs> the boys get a little rowdy during school, you know, she can send them up to the principal, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Working uh, from but, home definitely has a lot of advantages, but it does have the disadvantages too. The disadvantages, right. So, um, you know, when I first started out, you know, the, uh, the working from home thing, it was, it was difficult for my boys to separate a uh, daddy's home, but he's working, you know? <laughs> and so, and then, and, you know, it, it, it took, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half for really that to kind of sink in, you know? And uh, so, you know, I would get frustrated. I'm trying to get stuff done, you know, and then, but at the same time, you know, I'm trying to be a good father and, you know, not just shoot him away all the time, you know? So that's, is that balance, you know? And, yeah. and so that's, um, that's difficult. Um, but I mean, overall, I mean, now, now it, it just, it works really good. So, um, just that, just that kind of in between time and, and kind of setting those parameters, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, where I'm at, I'm out kind of on the country. I'm 25 minutes from town. So, you know, that, that, you know, a lot of times it seemed like I was like, going back and forth to town like three or four times a week, you know, mailing stuff out. And, you know, but then I found out how I can ship stuff from home, you know, print out my own, my postage yeah. and stuff like that. So that's been a huge help, you know, and um, so I don't have to do that nearly as much. So I think a lot of it is just uh, fine, you know, just, just going through the growing pains of, of, of just kind of finding what works, what doesn't and uh, trying to make things more efficient and, I'm not a terribly good businessman. So that's another struggle for me is just like, you know, I love the hands-on, I love hammering hot steel. I love the hard work, the physical labor. I can't stand the administrative part of it. <laughs> so, but yeah. you know, that, that, yeah, that yeah, I think really that's a struggle for a lot of us. You know, we have our, you know, there's the half of the business that we like and the other half, you know, that we don't like. And, and sometimes I have found in how the part that I thought I didn't like, it's actually one of my stronger parts. You know, okay. so, you know, that's, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of finding that balance. And, and when you work for yourself, you know, I, we surround ourselves with like-minded people and, you know, if you get that circle around you that you can bounce things off, it's like, okay, how, how are you guys doing this? You know, what, what are you doing in your business that, you know, that might work for me too. So it's just kind of finding those, those things and, and just talking to people and stuff. Well, obviously you're a smart businessman because you're doing well. <laughs> So, so Jared, tell me where can where can people find you? Uh, so they can uh, uh, they can find me at refinersforge.com. That's my own website, and then I'm also on uh, Etsy. So you can find my store, Refiners Forge, on Etsy as well. Okay. Excellent. And we'll be sure to um, drop those links and stuff in. And I know you have a YouTube channel too. That's yep. that's really popular. So we will uh, make sure that we drop all those links and all of this posting and everything. So people can find you and, you know, watch your videos. Those are, those are really impressive too, to see what you do. So Jared, I'd like to always end um, the interview with what is a, an inspirational quote for you? Yeah. So um, I'm not a big like quote kind of guy, but <laughs> you know, like, uh, guys I mean, usually my... have that answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, my, my passion is scripture though. I, I, I don't know if you had a chance to read my bio or not though, but uh, my, my degree in school was uh, religion. And so, uh, and I do do some, I do um, uh, part-time preaching at a local church. Oh, and wow. so, so uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm a busy man. That's, awesome. That's great. That's <laughs> um, fantastic. So what's your, so what's your favorite uh, scripture then? Yeah. So I was thinking about that and, you know, even growing up, I think, uh, you know, Philippians 4, 13, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And some people might, might see that as just kind of this blanket promise of whatever I want to do, God's going to bless me, but that's not it. If you look at it in the context of what Paul's talking about and the Philippians is that Paul, Paul is saying, I know what it's like be blessed and i know what it's like to be persecuted and you know i know but you know no matter what my circumstances are whether i'm facing persecution or i'm 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 being blessed or i'm going through difficult times you know i know that i can do all things with christ who strengthens me and 
Christ will give uh, us the power, the ability to do what it is that he has called us to do. And so, yeah. and so for me, that may not be, that may not mean success in my business, you know, but God will give me the ability and the strength to do what he's called me to be. And that's, you know, primarily one uh, follower of him to, uh, you know, husband to my wife and yeah. three, you know, a father to my children. And then, you know, he, he will, he'll, he will enable me in some way to also, you know, to, to fulfill those other, the, the second two, you know, to provide for my family in some way. So, yeah. um, whether it's yeah, through my absolutely. business or I got to go find a job somewhere else. So, you know, no matter what my circumstances, uh, whether, you know, whether it's good or bad, I can find joy in Christ and he's going to give me the strength to continue on to, to fulfill the purpose he has called me to do. You know, a lot of times they'll say, you know, you put your faith first, for, you put your faith first, your family second, your career third, and everything just kind of falls into line. I think a lot of people miss that. Is they're like, oh no, I got to work, I got to work, I got to work, I got to work for my family. Well, yeah, you do, but you know, you got to make sure that you have your priorities. You know that it, you know, work isn't everything, and I think that a lot through this last year, I think a lot of people have come to see that that there's more, there's more to life out there, you know, and, and there's more things to do and, and see. And I think it's brought a lot of people back. It, it, well, it's either made or break fam- made or broken families, you know, either. And I think a lot of it, from what I've seen, it's strengthened a lot of families and they really reconnected because they've, you know, either been forced into a quarantine or they haven't been able to see each other. And now they really appreciate being able to go and spend time together. So, you know, it's, it's kind of had that double edged sword, you know, so to speak of. So, but anyhow, but Jared, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and chatting with us. It has been so fun to hear about what you do. Thank you for your service, um, both as the the guard and uh, law enforcement. We sure do appreciate that. And we're going to make sure that we push everybody to your website to find you and check out what you're doing. So um, is there any final thoughts you want to end with? No, I just, uh, yeah, thank you so much for the time. Uh, you can also find me at Facebook under Refiner's Forge and Instagram under Refiner's Forge. It's all Refiner's Forge. <laughs> so, Perfect. But, uh, thank, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing and highlighting uh, small businesses, Made in America stuff, and I uh, greatly appreciate the, the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jared, we look forward to uh, seeing more of your work. And you guys, make sure you go and check him out. Check out his um, Facebook page, all his social platforms, his website, because he's got some really cool stuff um, for everybody. So with that um, being said, chat soon.